good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever applies to you. I hope you are well and welcome to Big Foodie Geek. And uh, this is my second video after returning from a hiatus from the filming on the channel. And this is a video that I have had planned for a very, very, very long time because I had this plan way before I took my hiatus from the channel. So this has been in the works for quite a while and I'm quite excited to try this one out because I bought a gadget way back like last year and I never got around to using it or even opening it until like yesterday. And I'm really looking forward to trying this out on the channel for the very first time because I have got an electric smoker that you can use indoors. I know. So I'm going to be putting this through its paces and seeing if I can smoke a beef brisket with it. Now, this is going to come with a lot of caveats because usually beef brisket is, you know, it's a very much an American thing. I'm going to put this down because it's covering up most of me, which I'm sure most people don't mind, but I'm going to put it down for the moment. Right. As I was saying, beef brisket is a big thing in America as in smoking meats and it's, it's such a big thing out there and there's a whole art form to it and the food is just amazing. Yeah, I've, I've had smoked food while I'm out there. I've had like smoked meats over here as well, but it's just a completely different quality. But smoking meat has picked up in popularity over here in the UK, but trying to do it on the same level as the US does, it's really, really difficult because you need the equipment, the cuts of meat are a bit different, Beef biscuit, beef, beef biscuit, <laughs> ooh, beef biscuit. The quality of the beef brisket you can get over in the US is very, very different. It's much higher quality. You get much bigger cuts of meat. The beef brisket I'm gonna be using for uh, my recipe today is gonna be a lot smaller than you can get over there. I, I've gone for like a two kilo cut of beef brisket, which is still a hefty cut of meat. It cost me like 30 quid for just that one cut. But the beef brisket over there that you can get, it's massive and it's pretty like bigger than my car. So as I said, there's gonna be a hell of a lot of caveats on this today. So I'm not gonna be able to get exactly the same effect. I am essentially winging it. It's, I'm not gonna be able to do a lot of the techniques that you can probably usually do when you're actually smoking this properly. Um, but I am going to be using wood chips because you know, that's the whole point of smoking. You get to use wood chips. So I picked up some of these. Apple wood smoke chips. So these are what I'm gonna be using today. Um, it's a nice big tub, I'm only going to be using a fraction of these, so hopefully this thing works well so I can do this a bit more often and use these things up. But these are what I'm going to be using to smoke my meat, hopefully it will give it a nice flavour, um, assuming all goes well. But let's have a look at the device itself. Let's open up this box, let's have a look at it and see what we're going to have to do with it. Because I'm looking forward to this, but I'm very, very nervous because that's an expensive cut of meat and if I mess it up, that's 30 quid down the toilet. So I opened up the box yesterday, you just have a quick glimpse in it. Like I said, this has been sat in my cupboard for like a year. And so, um, yeah, this is kind of like my first real time having a look at it properly. Hopefully it's working and all intact, but let's have a look. I've already had a look at the manual here because I just wanted to know what the heck I was doing before coming into this and knowing what sort of like size of meat I could buy and, and things like that. So we'll have a proper look at that in a moment because I want to know what I'm doing and you want to know what I'm doing as well. So in the top, we've got a lid. It's going to be very much kind of like a slow cooker in its shape, but obviously we're not, well, we are slow cooking in this, but not in the sense that we usually would with uh, a normal slow cooker. So we've got a nice glass lid there. We've got a like a bung to kind of like, which will let the smoke out if we need to. Then we've got the actual smoker itself. So let's take that out of there. Let's, uh, let's take off all this plastic. Don't approve of all this plastic, but it is what it is at the moment. Okay, I've got everything out of the box, out of the plastic. And what we've got here, we've got our base cooking pot and it's got a control panel on it. And it's basically got a start, a stop, a timer, but then we've got cold smoke, hot smoke, and combined smoke. Hold that up there. So basically cold smoking is for smoking foods that you don't really want to cook or you might be cooking later. So you might want to perhaps smoke things like garlic or other bits and pieces like that. Hot smoke is for obviously smoking food and cooking it at the same time. And combined smoke is for doing both. So you infuse it with some cold smoke to get that smoky flavor in. And then you use the hot smoke to then cook it and obviously seal in that smoky flavor. And I'm probably gonna end up using the combined smoke for my beef brisket, because obviously I wanna get that flavor into it and then seal it in and cook it. 
and it also it says in the manual which i've had a peek at already to use combined smoke on larger cuts of meat which this is then within here you've got your heating element which is obviously what's going to heat up and then create the smoke from our wood chips and we've got our charring cup here which fits over our heating element and then we've got a lid which will then go on that to, which will then just gently release the smoke out the sides of the charring cup it also comes with a base rack, which is what we will be resting our food on. And it also comes with a couple of other racks in case you want to lay up some food as well. So you might have perhaps some ribs on here and maybe some ribs on here, something like that. Oh, ribs, that might be something to do uh, another time if this brisket works. And of course, there was the lid, which we saw as we were taking it out of the box which should just fit on like so, they say. There we go, yep. So you kind of just seal that in there and then you've got that vent there in case you do want to let any of the smoke out. And that's it. And it's a, it looks quite nifty. I can't remember how much it cost me. It was like well, over a year ago since I bought it. It wasn't super expensive, that's why I bought it. And because I'm currently living in a flat, um, I thought it'd be a good thing to try out, see if it's actually any good and see if it actually does the job. So yeah, I'm going to be giving a go of smoking a brisket in this thing. So let's hope it works because I really like brisket and uh, I don't want to wreck a 30 pound cup of meat. <laughs> let's give this a go, shall we? Obviously, before I go using my smoker, in the words of Missy Edit, I want to know how to work it. So I've got the manual here and I've looked up the combined smoke, which is what we're going to be doing and it basically says you know, plug it in, you've got to position the charring cup around the heating element, place the wood chips in around the element in the charring cup. If we're cooking for up to two hours, uh, fill it halfway or between two and four hours, fill it. Um, I'm probably going to be doing two to four hours based on the cut of meat I've got, which we'll have a look at shortly. Then we've got to place the lid on the charring cup, add the base rack smoker, place the food in, put the lid on, and then we've got to do combined smoke and a timer. The display will count up from half, half an hour, I think that is, to that's certainly not 30 seconds, half hour to four hours. Uh, hold the timer button down for rapid increase. So um, we've got the times over here for combined smoke. So basically it tells us kind of what the split is on cold smoke versus hot smoke. So if we do it for like four, four hours, then it'll be one hour and 36 minutes on cold smoke and then two hours, 24 minutes on hot smoke, which I think we will probably will want to do in this case. I might check it after three hours because we're gonna have to get in with a temperature probe to see what the temperature of the meat is on the inside and it actually gives us a handy dandy guide at the front somewhere yep here we go um, of what we want the internal temperature of our meat to be in here beef brisket you can see it'll be between 87 and 95 degrees C so that's what we'll be looking out for when we make our beef brisket so I've got a big idea of how this is going to work so Let's get my meat rubbed and get it smoking, shall we? Usually when I'm doing like barbecue style meat, slow cooked meats, I would make a lovely rub for it, which would have all kinds of stuff in it. I would use things like cayenne pepper, chili powder, cumin, smoked paprika, onion granules, garlic granules, all of these things that you see here. But for this, I'm not going to be using all of these. I'm simply going to be using bees. So I'm just going to be using salt, some black pepper, and a bit of white pepper as well, because I really like white pepper and the flavor it gives. And that's all I'm going to be using, just simply using salt and pepper, because that is kind of like the popular thing to do over in the US. If you do the uh, brisket right, then that's all you need. That's all you need to season the meat with. And to be honest, if I'm going to put this thing through its true places, then I don't really want to disguise the meat with all those other flavors. I want to see what this smoker can do in and of itself just by using these basic seasonings. So that's all I'm going to be rubbing on my meat, if you excuse the phrase. So I've got my cut of brisket here. Uh, brisket is actually the cut of meat that comes from the breast or lower chest of the cow. And it takes about 60% of the supportive weight of the cow. So it's a very, very muscular bit of meat so it needs long slow cooking for it to be able to be a nice tender meat that's why it's perfect for things like slow cookers and smoking and all I'm going to be doing with this is coating it in salt and pepper mix that I'm going to be doing and we're just going to smoke it for about four hours 
and see how we go with it. As I mentioned, this is a two kilo cut. I couldn't go any bigger than that because it wouldn't fit into my smoker. And also, yeah, it was 30 pounds anyway. I wouldn't want to spend any more than that. That's already a lot of money to spend on one cut of meat as far as I'm concerned with the way my finances are at the moment. Plus, if I wreck an even more expensive cut of meat trying to do this, I will be very, very upset. You can see it's quite a chunky bit of meat but this is small fry compared to what you can get out in the US. Thankfully, the butcher has already trimmed this for me. It's got most of the fat off of it. So, you know, it's got a bit of fat over here, but apart from that, most of the fat is off. Usually in the US, you'll get like punks of meat that are probably about a good two or three times bigger than this. And usually you've got things like the end point and, and bits and pieces like that, but this is a nicely trimmed bit, which is perfect for my purposes. Bearing in mind, I'm doing this with all the limitations that I have with the equipment and the cuts of meat that I have available to me. Anyway, I'm gonna get this coated in my salt and pepper mix. So I'm gonna go for a tablespoon of sea salt, tablespoon of ground black pepper, and half a tablespoon of ground white pepper. Mix that all in together with my hands. Then we're gonna get this all rubbed over our meat. I don't want a huge coating of the rub. Some people go for like a really thick coating of rub, but apparently that's not the best thing to do. You just wanna kind of coat it with the flavors, but you don't want like a thick coating of like spice and things like that because we're trying to build up something called a bark, which is like the key thing when smoking meat. But whether I'm gonna be able to get that in my electric smoker is something I am not sure about, because I have no idea how this is gonna work, whether it's gonna work at all. And quite frankly, I'm nervous. I'm nervous as to how this is gonna turn out. I'm just gonna cut off this loose bit here, because quite frankly, this looks quite tough and I don't want that bit just kind of being dangling loose. So as I mentioned before, I'm going to be doing the combined smoke method on this, which is a combination of cold smoke and hot smoke. So I'm gonna be following the instructions for this from the book because quite frankly, I don't wanna risk winging it. Plus all the techniques that you see for smoking meats on YouTube and stuff don't apply here because we are using a bog standard electric indoor smoker and uh, I've never seen anyone use one of these before. So first things first, position the charring cup around the heating element. Well, that's already done. Then I've got to place my wood chips around the heating element. I've got to do it full because I'm doing it for four hours. If I was doing it for like one to two, it would be half full. And I place on my lid and I'm going to pop in my base rack. I'm putting it that way up to give it a nice bit of height above the uh, charring cup. Then in I go with my meat fits in there quite nicely. That's why I wouldn't have wanted to go for a bigger cut of meat than that. And my battery is about to run out, so I'm going to uh, quickly cut away to change my battery. Right, my battery's changed and I've just repositioned the camera a bit so we can see this a bit better. For those of you that are observant, yes, this is on top of my oven, uh, on top of my hob rather, because uh, it has an extractor fan above it. So if the smoke starts to escape from this, I can turn on my extractor fan and it will escape the smoke for me. On with my lid, make sure this is on and properly sealed, make sure the vent is closed on it. I'm gonna set this by doing a cold smoke and then doing a timer. So if I hold this down, I'm gonna bring it up to the full four hours. Oh, it's only letting me do it up to, oh, that's cold smoke, Matthew, you're doing it wrong. Combined smoke, there we go. Helps if I do the right one. Right, one, two, two and a half, three, four. There we go. Helps if I press the right buttons. And then all I do is press start. And that's it. So I'm gonna have to just give it a few minutes to let it start smoking. And then I just guess I just leave it and just keep an eye on it, make sure it's not gonna set my house on fire and things like that. But this is exciting. I'm, I'm excited to see how this is gonna turn out. <laughs> it's only been a couple of minutes, but you can see that is already smoking a lot and it's already starting to come out the sides a little bit. So I am gonna to have to turn on the extractor fan which is very noisy. So I'm gonna to have to just leave this <laughs> and see how we are in a couple of hours. Right, we're over halfway now. So I wanted to do like a little halfway check-in. We're off the cold smoke um, portion of the smoking now and onto the hot smoke. 
I've actually turned off my extractor fan so you can hear me, but there's actually not a lot of smoke going on now. It's settled down. You're getting now more, rather than the smell of smoke, the smell of food that is smoked being cooked. And you can see it's getting more um, moisture condensation in there, which is obviously from the cooking process. You know, it's not like leaking smoke everywhere anymore. You know, I think that was just to kind of start off with and I probably didn't have the lid on quite. I can feel the heat coming from that. Yeah, it seems to be doing what it's doing. Actually, there's a little bit of smoke coming from over there, but really not very much. I think the extractor fan has been doing its job and I actually, <laughs> I actually went out while it was uh, smoking and went for a run, which maybe not have been the uh, most sensible thing to do, leaving something like this unattended, but it hasn't burnt the house down. So I'm fairly happy with that. So it seems to be doing what it's doing and it's just ticking along. So we'll come back in one hour and 46 minutes and see how it's got on. Right, there's one minute left. So we're coming up to the moment of truth to see how this is done. Quite a bit of steam escaping from it now. Um, so I, I don't know if it's actually going to end up with like that that bark you would get from like traditional smoking methods, but I'm intrigued to see how it's going to have come out. Oh, there we go, all done. So should I leave it for a moment? Should I let the uh, steam dissipate? Maybe I'll unplug the vent carefully. Whoop, and let some of that steam escape before I attempt to take the lid off because I, I don't want to scald myself or anything like that but I'm going to be very very intrigued to see what this is like I don't know if it's going to need longer uh, shorter yeah whether I've given it too long I'm um, going by what the uh, the instructions were telling me so let's take it off I'm too impatient I can't wait to see how this has come out <laughs> I think <laughs> actually the lid's not coming off. Oh no, <laughs> it's because uh, it's, it's sealed in with all the condensation. Okay, I'm gonna put it down the camera. Okay, I've managed to loosen the lid, so let's take a look. Ooh, look at that. That, that actually looks pretty dang decent. Um, that looks a hell of a lot, hell of a lot better than I was expecting. It kind of has got that bark, it's got nice sheen on it it's got a lovely color on it i am actually very surprised at how that has turned out it looks like looks like it's very very nice indeed but the important thing is going to see what the temperature is so i'm going to pop the camera back and see what the uh, internal temperature is because that will uh, let me know if uh, it needs a bit longer or not got my meat thermometer here so i'm gonna plunge this into what is the thickest part so that's about here it needs to be uh, between like i think it was like between 85 and 92 degrees c so oh yeah that that is that's pretty much bang on that's like 87 so yeah that is done so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this some time to rest. I'm going to wrap it up in some foil. I'm just going to pop it into the oven. The oven's not going to be on. And I just want to give it some time to rest. And then, then I'm going to cut into it and just see what the inside's like, because I'm very, very excited to see what this is like. Because that, that looks astounding. Much better than what I thought it would. Pleasantly surprised here, pleasantly surprised. I don't know if you can see how juicy that is but look at that that looks fantastic look at that oh steaming up so gently wrap this up not too tightly just fairly loosely and I'm gonna pop that to rest in the oven for about half hour and then I'm gonna cut into it and see see what it looks like and then obviously the important part see how it tastes because that's turned out at least in terms of looks much better than i expected i thought i'd show you what the inside of the smoke is like after the actual smoking you can see a lot of the uh, the juice and, and stuff has dripped into the smoker which is to be expected to be honest you know so a lot of the fat a lot of the uh, juice there and you can see all the wood chips there have basically 
they've charred, but they've not like turned to ashes or anything like that. So it's probably gonna be a little bit of a clean up job, but to be honest, not as bad as I thought. Um, and I can probably save all of those lovely juices for something like a stock or anything like that. So they won't go to waste. Uh, this might be a little bit harder to clean up, but what do you expect when you're smoking meat? But that's uh, yeah, that's the inside. Right, I feel like this is the best angle we're gonna get for cutting into this. Um, apologies if you can hear my dishwasher, but I've got a lot of dishes to wash at the moment. So I've, I've, I've got, to, got to put it on. So, yep, enough talking from me. Let's cut into this baby because I'm really excited to see how this looks inside. I really hope it's turned out nicely. It should be cooked. Um, the temperature said it is. So I've got nothing else left to do but to cut into this. I'm going to cut it across this way because I feel like that's the best way to do so rather than going that way. I could be wrong, but uh, that's, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. So let's, let's not waste any more time. Let's not cut my fingers. It's not the best angle for me to do this, but oh, let's have a look, shall we? Oh, that actually looks, oh, look at that. That has come out. Oh, look at the juice coming out of that. But this is the main, this is the main part. And it's kind of, it's got that brisket waterfall as they call it. That <laughs> has done a heck of a lot better than I thought it would. That has come out really, really well. You know, for a first try at smoking a brisket in a electric smoker indoors, that has come out really dang well. Really dang well indeed. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm almost a bit speechless, um, yeah. <laughs> which uh, if you watch my videos is actually quite rare. Um, but that has come out so, so nicely. Look, look at those juices. Look at it. So there's nothing else left to do but to give this a try. Um, it smells amazing as well. It's got that beautiful, like, you know, uh, wood smoke smell, apple wood smoke smell. It's, it's, it's fantastic. So. I'm going to get this served up and uh, I'm going to give it a go because uh, I can't wait. I really can't wait. There we go. Look at that. Home smoked beef brisket indoors in an electric smoker. I've served it up with like some home cut, um, homemade skin on fries and some red cabbage slaw. But we, we don't care about that. That's not what we're here for. We're here for the main event, which is this. And uh, I've been resisting trying this <laughs> off camera. So I'm not gonna wait anymore. I am going to give this a go because it looks amazing. It's, like I said, I keep saying it, it's turned out so much better than I thought it would. So I'm just gonna bite onto this bit. No dignity whatsoever, no shame. Uh, oh. Oh, it's really, really tender. Oh, that is so good. That is fantastic. Can't stress how well that's come out. Is it USA barbecue good? No. Is it like restaurant good? No. Is it good? Hell yeah, that is amazing. You've got the smokiness, but it's not overpowering. You still get the meat, you get some of that salt and pepper seasoning that I put on it. It has come out so well. I am so, so chuffed with that. That is, that is fantastic. Oh, mm. oh, that is a game changer. It really is. Well, I don't know what to say about that. That has come out so much better than I thought it would. Um, I didn't have high hopes for it. You know, it wasn't that expensive. I'm sure it was like less than a hundred quid. I'd have to look it up, probably put a link in the description if it's still available um, from Amazon where I got it. But it's it's really good. It's turned out really well. It's easy to use. It's got the flavor in it. It's got like the beautiful, like moist inside that you would expect. It's 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 turned out so well. I, 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 I'm almost speechless, almost. And it just tastes really good as well. It's 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 a great piece of kit. Um, I, oh, I'm going to have to test it on other things now. I'm going to have to try like the cold smoking on perhaps things like garlic and things like that. I want to try it on ribs and other bits and pieces. Uh, that that's blown my mind a little bit. It really has. Indoor smoking, it's possible. It is possible. So what more can I say? But 
Um, nothing really, because actually I want to go and eat the rest of that brisket that I've got on my plate. So um, if you don't mind, I'm not going to stick around, which I'm sure you you don't mind either because I've prattled on for long enough. But I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed it. It was, you know, it's blown my expectations out of what's possible out of the water, really. So yeah, I, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, obviously like, subscribe, all those great things, share it if you can. And um, yeah, and I will see you next time on Big Foodie Geek. Take care of yourselves. Bye bye. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever applies to you, welcome back. Nah. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever applies to you, welcome to... Oh, I'm sweating so much. <laughs> Hello, Roko. You want to come and do the intro? No? It's going to walk off. Fine, you're going to help.